Come on, Olivia, let's get TV night started. Calm down, I'm just trying to get some popcorn. How can you be clumsy and have great reflexes? One of life's greatest mysteries. Who's that? Oh right, I forgot. I invited a friend over for TV night tonight. He's cool, you'll like him. Hey guys, thanks for having me over. No problem, man. All right, what should we watch tonight? We could watch Amphibia or The Owl House. I've never heard of those shows before. What are they about? Oh, they are amazing. They're easily some of the best animated shows ever. Animated? Aren't those types of shows for kids? You gotta start running. Wait, what? Run! Not all cartoons are kids' shows! <laughs> ah, TV! A way for people to get into a good story and escape from their very stressful lives. I tend to watch a lot of TV in my life, whether it be binge-watching some of my favorite shows during the summer, or just watching TV instead of doing my homework, and if you're my parents, that might be really disappointing. <laughs> Me and my twin sister, Olivia, love watching animated shows. Go figure, we're an animation channel, after all. We love shows like Phineas and Ferb, Gravity Falls, Adventure Time, etc, etc. But there are some amazing underrated shows that we love that lots of people deserve to see. We've tried getting our friends to watch these shows for years now, but once they realize that it's an animated show, they usually say something along the lines of, What? Those types of shows are for kids. Watch an actual show like The Office. No one asked you, Phil! A lot of people tend to judge animated shows like this, and it's really annoying. There are some amazing underrated shows out there that deserve a lot more attention than they actually have, but people won't watch them because they think all animated content is for kids. I mean, did you watch the Oscars? Wait, I'm getting somewhat off topic. What were we talking about again? Um, underrated shows? Oh right, that thing. There are a lot of shows that we really want to talk about, but it would take us forever to get through them all, so we're just gonna do our top three instead. So just sit back, relax, and get ready to witness three of the greatest shows of all time! Hey, remember to avoid as many spoilers as you can. Yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, the first show on our list is Amphibia. Oh boy, do I have a lot to say about this show. In this show, three girls, Anne, Sasha, and Marcy, open a magical music box which teleports them to a world of frog people called Amphibia. Sounds like an average day to me. Anne wakes up in the middle of the forest and meets a frog boy named Sprig. The two get to know each other, but then some frogs from Sprig's town try to kill Anne thinking she is a monster who wants to eat them. Sprig manages to stop them and convinces them that she's not a monster. Anne then moves in with Sprig and his sister Polly and his grandpa Hop Hop. As the show continues, Anne and Sprig get to random misadventures as they, Hop Hop, and Polly try and find Anne away home and also find her friends. Okay, this show is amazing. There is so much that I would love to talk about, but because of spoilers, and if I use too many clips, YouTube's gonna come and break my kneecaps, I'm gonna have to cut out a lot of what I want to talk about. I still have a lot to talk about, though, trust me. Amphibia does play out like your typical fish-out-of-water story, but it's so unique and different from other shows. You see, shows like Phineas and Ferb and Gravity Falls tend to stick with a formula. Phineas and Ferb tends to have the same layout for every episode, which usually is... I know what we're gonna do today! Hey, where's Barry? Ah, there you are, Agent P. Get right on it. Perry the platypus. The world's largest firecracker. We're already on. Besides, I ain't got rhythm. Take that! A nut! Cause you, Perry the platypus. Wait, is that love handle? While Gravity Falls had the same theme for every episode, floating Dorito. I, I understood that reference. But what makes Amphibia so great is that they take all of these formulas and then they add their own little spin on it. For example, there's an episode where Anne breaks Hop Hop's cane and her, Sprig, and Polly try and find a way to fix it. And there's also a monster who's trying to kill him. What I love about this formula so much is that there's always something for everyone on this show. Sitcom episodes? Check. Adventure episodes? Check. Mystery episodes? Check. Emotional episodes? Check. I never really got emotional watching those episodes, to be honest. That's a lie. He cried watching multiple episodes. Shut up, you did too. Pfft, whatever. The other thing that makes this show amazing is its characters. Each character is amazing and written to perfection, especially Anne and the Planters. Anne does act like your average teenager, but she's also really funny, kind, and brave. Sprig is the goofier one and does tend to get into the most trouble, <laughs> like me, but he's also really clever and is very skillful. Polly looks like a normal tadpole, but she just wants chaos. <laughs> like me. And Hop Hop can be stubborn, but he will do anything to protect his family. These four are really relatable, and that's another thing that makes this show so amazing. 
And honestly, it's not just them that are relatable. Anyone could watch the show and find at least one character that they relate to. In fact, mine and Olivia's favorite character is really relatable to us. I would love to talk about this character, but I can't because they are a minor spoiler. One last thing I want to mention is that season one is very slow. It's mainly just filler episodes, but also has some really important episodes as well. So if you get bored watching the show, please don't stop watching. It gets way better. Trust me. Anyway, this show is amazing with great characters and a great plot. Go watch it on Disney+. Plus. Hashtag not sponsored. All right, one down, two more to go. Next show on our list is The Owl House. It's another fish out of water story, but with its own twist. In this show, we follow Luz, a girl who has an overactive imagination and intends to get her into a lot of trouble at school. This kind of ended up being a daily thing, though, so when Luz accidentally let a bunch of snakes loose in the school for a school project, her mom decided enough was enough, and she sent Luz to a summer camp to hopefully fix the problem. But before Luz left for camp, an owl stole her favorite book alongside some other junk. Luz chased it to an abandoned house where a portal opened up and the two ran through it. Luz is then transported to a world of magic and witches called the Boiling Isles. Luz is amazed by this new world she has found herself in because it was basically her dream fantasy world. Well, kinda. She then finds the owl and realizes it belongs to a witch named Ida the Owl Lady. Ida then sees Luz, realizes she's a human, and then tells her that she needs her help. Luz agrees, and Ida takes her to her house, the Owl House, hence the name of the show. Ida then lets Luz inside, and then introduces her to King, one of the most cutest TV show characters I've ever seen in my life, and is voiced by the previously mentioned floating Dorito. King explained to Luz that he used to be a powerful king of demons, but he lost his powers because a guy called the Warden stole his crown. I I I'm not making that up. That that's his name. His name is the Warden. <laughs> he then explained that it was locked away and is protected by a force field that only a human can penetrate. Ida then cuts in and then says that's why they need her. They made a deal that Luz would get the crown and then Ida and King would let her go home. Long story short, the crown ended up being a Burger King crown the whole time Luz, Ida, and King fought the Warden. They blew up his mouth, blah, blah, blah. Wait. What? Anyway! Afterwards, Ida thanks Luz for her help and says that she can go now. She opens a portal back to Earth, but Luz says that she wants to stay and asks if Ida could teach her how to be a witch. Ida likes the idea and lets Luz stay. Alright, sorry for that really long recap. This show is so good. I can't talk about this show as much as I did with Amphibia because every episode has something important story or lore-wise. So I'll try and avoid as much spoilers as I can. Okay, first off, Luz, Ida, and King are some of the greatest characters I've seen in any TV show. Luz is goofy and constantly gets herself into trouble, but just like Anne, she is very brave and will do anything to protect her new friends. Ida is awesome. She is the most powerful witch on the Boiling Isles, and for good reason. She can cast almost any spell and get away from anything. She definitely doesn't have any dark secrets and doesn't have anything secret about her past. <laughs> Ow! What was that for? Stop being obvious or I'm taking away your switch privileges. What? Since when do you have that authority? Since GP sold me your soul. What? Why did you do that? She drives a hard bargain. What did she give you? She gave me the best water gun in the market. Wait, that's my water gun. Not anymore! How did you get Copper's water gun? Sorry, Copper, you're not getting your water gun back. Once GP takes something, it's hers. Aw, oh, man. Wait, what was I talking about again? Oh, right, characters. And King is King. He's perfect. Case closed. Also, the Boiling Isles is just amazing in itself. There are so many species, spells, biomes, plants, you name it. There is so much about it that makes it feel like an actual wizarding world. No, not that kind! Also, just like Amphibia, the plot of this show is amazing. It has a really mysterious vibe to it, and it always keeps you on the edge of your seat. There is so much story in this show, and it always makes me want to come back for more. Anyway, another amazing show. Go watch it on Disney+. Plus. Hashtag still not sponsored. Alright, final show on our list is Murder Drones. Two quick things before I start. Only the pilot is out right now, so I'm going to be recapping the whole thing, so major spoiler warning. If you are interested in the show and don't want spoilers, go check out the trailer for it. Link is in the description. Also, this show is rated TVPG, but isn't really for kids because of a <clears throat> robot violence. So just a heads up for those who might need it. With that out of the way, the show is insane. Basically, in the future, humans made these robots called worker drones. They were forced to mine exoplanets for their parent company, JC Jensen, in space. And also weren't really treated very well. So yeah, the worker drones were kind of mad about that. But then, some humans accidentally exploded a factory on one of the planets, and it killed all biological life on it. The worker drone survived and said, Alright, time to rebuild society. But JC Jets had figured out what the worker drones were doing, and they made these robots called murder drones to go and kill the worker drones because they were afraid of the worker drones starting a robot uprising or something, I don't know. <laughs> I could just imagine the board members of JC Jensen in a board meeting saying something like, Oh shoot! The worker drones are trying to live normal lives? This is gonna turn out like Terminator! What do we do? I've got it! We fight fire with fire! Or, in this case, 
fight robots with robots! Let's just waste millions of dollars to make new robots to go and kill the other robots! Yes! Can't we just find the servers that power the drones and shut them off or something? Of course not! If we do that, we won't get to watch the robots that we made destroy each other for our entertainment! And we could turn that into a TV show! Capitalism! <laughs> <sighs> Why do I work here again? Because you're a hologram! Oh, okay. Anyway, the worker drones are now all living underground to try and hide from the murder drones. The base is protected by three huge metal doors that keep the murder drones out. Fast forward a few years, a worker drone named Uzi hates hiding from the murder drone, so she made a quote, sick as heck ray gun to try and get rid of him. Only problem is, is that she needs one more part to finish it, and it's at the murder drone lair. She tries sneaking out, but is caught by her dad, who is also the guy who made the doors. Uzi makes up a lie so that her dad will let her out, and then she starts to head to the murder drone base to try and find the piece. Once she gets there, she gets the piece, but then is caught by a murder drone. They have a fight, and Uzi manages to shoot the murder drone's head with her ray gun. She thought her problems were over, but the murder drone regenerated its head. But when he rebooted, he seemed to have a bug in his system and thought Uzi was another murder drone coming to join his squad. He introduced himself as N and told Uzi about his other two squad members. V, the crazy one, and J, the leader of the squad who also hates N and thinks he's useless. So yeah, N has some great friends. N then showed Uzi the landing pod that him, V, and J came in, and Uzi realized that it was actually a spaceship. Uzi told N that if they fixed it, it could get them off the planet. N liked the idea, but he said that they should just follow the rules and not think about it. But then, J and V came back to the murder drone lair, and Uzi dashed back to the worker drone lair to not get killed, leaving N confused. J then found N and realized that he had a system problem, so she slapped him to reboot his system. You see everyone? This is how you properly reboot something. Just slap it until it starts working. Logic! Anyway, N remembers everything and goes to catch Uzi before she can make it back to the worker drone base. Meanwhile, Uzi made it back to the base, quickly got in, and tried to close the doors before any murder drones could get in. But N quickly got in before the doors closed. Uzi then makes a run for it while trying to reboot her ray gun. And continues to try and catch Uzi while <clears throat> harming other worker drones that gets in his way. He eventually catches Uzi just as Uzi's dad is walking in. Uzi tells her dad to grab her ray gun and fire it at N, but he's too scared to do it, shuts the base on lockdown, shutting all the doors, leaving Uzi for dead. Nice job, dude, you definitely won dad of the year for that one. N feels really bad for Uzi, but then V and J show up, so he flings her to the other side of the room so that way V and J won't see her. V climbs into the vents to try and find a way past the doors, and N asks J why JC Jensen sent them to kill all the worker drones and says that it doesn't feel right. J doesn't like N questioning their programming, so she infects him with a deadly virus and flies off to help V find the other worker drones. Uzi tries to follow them, but before she does, N apologizes for everything he did. Uzi then feels bad, so she stops the virus and her and N go to stop V and J. They all have a fight which is beautifully animated by the way, I mean look at this, it's awesome! N ties up V, J seems to have glitched Uzi's system or something, and then Uzi gets the upper hand and shoots J with her ray gun blowing her up. All of the worker drones are very grateful for Uzi and N's help, but Uzi is still mad at her dad and banishes herself. Couldn't imagine why. Her and N then grab V and fly back to the murder drone lair. Once they get back, Uzi says how much she can't wait to fix the ship and kill all humans. Her screen then glitches for a sec, showing some sort of murder drone code or something. And then the episode ends. Wow, that took forever. So yeah, this show is awesome. The plot is great, the characters are great, the music is great, and this is a really high quality show for an indie animation company on YouTube. Massive props to the team who made this show. Also, N is definitely the best character in this entire show. I didn't say any of this in the recap, but N is hilarious and has some of the best moments in the entire show. Did you just slap me with that arm? Uh, no worries, I'm N, but uh, a whole letter is a lot to remember. <laughs> So obviously a lot of mutual respect there. I would straight up kill you myself. Jay's awesome. Hey, fellas. Ooh, deal me in. I love rummy. Wait, no. I'm going to murder everyone. Ah! My mind's in a weird place! Don't read into this! I'm so, so sorry. Have fun repressing this. <laughs> you! What the he honestly just gives a really funny vibe to this horror show. Me and Olivia are easily scared and don't do anything horror related, but N makes watching this show not so scary. Uzi is a very interesting character in her own way. Yeah, she acts like your stereotypical teenager, but she takes it to a much higher extreme than, say, Anne or Luz. She does want the best for her people, though, but she does tend to solve problems in extreme ways. Me and Olivia are really big fans of this show, and we can't wait for the rest of the show to come out later this year. So yeah, another great show. You can watch it here on YouTube, 12 out of 10. Alright, that was the last show. What did you think? I don't know, man. These shows sound cool and all, but I don't know if they're really my thing. That is totally fine, man. I get it.
All that I ask is that you watch a couple of episodes before you make your final decision on how you feel about the show. Same goes for all you people watching. Go watch a couple of episodes and who knows, you might have just found your new favorite show. Just stop judging animated shows just because they're animated. Hey bro, this has been fun and all, but you've been going on for 10 minutes now and we still need to pick something to watch. So are you done yet? Oh right, sorry, I got sidetracked. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching and eat more spaghetti. And you know what are I you uh, sure I can't get my water gun back? Yep. Darn it. Hey everyone, thank y'all so much for watching. I'm sorry this video took so long to come out. I was just trying to make it as high quality as I could. Um, there was some stuff I had to cut, some stuff I wanted to add that I couldn't, but I'm so glad with the way that this video turned out. I love it, and I think it might be my favorite video that we have made on the channel so far. Um, anyway, I want to make a huge shout out to Copper Star Tunes for voicing himself in the video. Um, it was so much fun to work with him. When he sent in his lines, I listened to him. I'm just all like, holy crap, this guy is so good. Um, he's actually here right now. Um, do you want to say anything? Everyone watching, make sure you scroll down and hit the subscribe button. It was so fun to do this collab, and let's get them to well over 100 subscribers, because they really deserve it. Please, just subscribe. They're holding me hostage and won't let me go till you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that nice comment, Copper. Um, I gotta go. Bye. See you guys next month.